You're listening to TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. We're your hosts. I'm Kate. And I'm Nicole. And this is our show where, you know what? Let's do something a little different. Welcome to TG1F's Read an F1 Romance Novel Month. F1 Romance, author interviews, book recommendations, oh my. Join us for a month-long celebration of F1 Romance authors and the stories that get our hearts racing. Because while F1 drivers are filling their shelves with trophies, we're filling yours with F1 Romance novels. Who are we talking to today, Kate? Turn the page and find out. All right. Welcome to the podcast, Anna Albo. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Awesome. So we're going to dive right into it. Uh, we got a lot to cover, a lot of work of yours to to learn about. So could you give anyone listening who is not familiar with your work a little bit of a synopsis of the Life in the Fast Lane series? Uh, that one, my Life in the Fast Lane series stars uh, Luna Perez and Devin Flynn. Definitely uh, don't start off as good friends. That's for sure. It's definitely <laughs> an enemies, enemies to lovers situation um she finds herself inheriting one third of a racing team with her brother and uncle Mm -hmm. and she newly graduated from school and she's not sure what she wants to do with her life but now she really has no choice and so she joins the team in a capacity of kind of like a public relations and who does she meet but Devin Flynn, who uh, races for another team? Okay. And scandalous. Well, scandalous, forbidden. Her brother forbids anything, but you know, opposites attract, and he's a playboy, and he's fun, and he's everything she's not. And hell yeah. Uh, all madness ensues after that. I don't know how much I want to give away. Yeah, don't give away too much. You got to leave the people wanting more. Yeah, definitely. I love that. I mean, we are huge enemies to lovers on (laughs) on this podcast. So, you know, the thought of not only falling for the playboy bad boy, Mm -hmm. but also hating the fact that you're falling for the playboy bad boy is kind of my favorite thing in the world. (laughs) So you... so. Across all of your books, you really love writing empowered female characters. Can you tell us a little bit more about the process and and how you find inspiration and come up with their character arcs? You know, I think that I'm I'm not I don't want to knock any other authors for sure, but I find there are a lot of, for lack of a better word, too many damsels in distress. Mm-hmm. Who needs to have, you know, the guy swoop in and save her. And I kind of like to know that my characters are independent. They can do their own thing. They don't need the guy to complete them. And um, in, in the case of Luna, uh, or she starts off as, you know, kind of a little lost, right? And he's there to help her with her journey mm-hmm. of rediscovering discovering herself and 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 her challenges he's there to help her along the way but i want to know at the end of the day she can do it without him but <laughs> she can still be in love with him yeah yeah does that make sense a hundred percent i think yeah i think that's important i think most uh, i mean at least kate and i i, I can speak from experience that so that's kind of how we live our lives we don't need a man but we like them no we like to but have we them like around to have sometimes. Them around, yeah. Right? So that's that's her journey is finding out that because she has not it, it's not giving anything away. A bit of an overbearing brother who, you know, <laughs> has forbidden this romance, who kind of wants to make her do what he wants her to do. Mm-hmm. And initially she does that because she's new to the scene. And he, I should right. mention he's he is a race car driver, as also Got a part owner of the team. And so she's trying to rediscover herself and also break away from him. So that's another part of that female empowerment is she doesn't need him to tell her how she's going to live her life. Yeah. I like to think of it as like books and relationships where the men is like like the salt. Where like you can be a full meal. And like have everything going, but you add a little salt and it just like enhances it. Like I can be my own person, but my husband is like the salt. He just like makes me better 
in yeah. certain ways and enhances all the good things. So I feel like that's like a perfect like idea for characters is that like she can be her own thing, but he's there to to help to right. enhance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Um, so how did you originally get into Formula One? Have you been a fan mm. for a long time or? I've been a fan, I'm going to say, probably since my teens. Okay. My dad and I my dad and I used to watch it together. He's passed now, and that's okay. But um, he and I used to, I, God, I remember getting up in the middle of the night to watch the Japanese Grand Prix hmm. so that we could watch it together. I think it was like three in the morning. Like weird oh, stuff we do. So I have those good memories with him doing that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. That's and- so sweet. Is yeah. that how you decided to to write this this series? Was it like thinking about all of those memories? Yeah, a little bit, and like reliving all those 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 races and the drama, the time. And I'm not, I don't want to age myself too much, so I'm not going to say much more. But well, <laughs> the timing. But you know, there was so much drama at the time, and I loved it. And I thought, how can I make this into a book? And so I eventually did was always marinating in my brain. I love that. So, yeah. you know, since you've been a fan for a while, but, you know, the books are relatively recent, is there anyone or any experiences that you pulled inspiration from on the grid, the current or past grid to kind of write these characters? You know, it doesn't have to be fully, but, like, was there any bits and pieces that you pulled from um, the past or the present to kind of put into these books? You know, it's funny. I remember, and this gets into a time in my life when I had some, like, I was a little depressed and I remember, you know, I didn't want to do much with my life. And I was just at a university. I remember I'm watching Formula One and there was these after race uh, interview with one of the racers at the time, one of the, one of the guys. And it was the most fun interview I had ever seen. He was being interviewed. I should say I'm Italian, so I, I have I can can't really speak it well, but I understand it. So I'm watching it with my dad, and he's listening. And they're asking him questions. This this race car driver at- questions in Italian, and the answers he tried so hard to speak <laughs> Italian, and I could not stop laughing. And I thought, who is this guy? And I remember googling him. And the next thing I know, I started writing a book. Who was now, it? Now, it's not this series. If I give it away, oh my God, I'll give my age away. Oh, come on. Oh, all right. It was, it was Eddie Irvine back okay. in the day. Okay. Okay. And back in the day. And then I'm like, who is this crazy dude? So I Googled him and I thought, oh, I think I can write a story about this guy. Now, it's not full throttle. Yeah, but it is another one which, unfortunately, the rights are tied up with. But that's okay; I'll get them back, <laughs> and um, I'm going to publish it. And that's he was my favorite. He I was just I love it. crazy. He was nutty. He was fun. He was a total. He's not dead. He's a, he <laughs> is was a total playboy. So he kind of inspired that that getting me out of a funk and making me write a book. That's incredible. I love that. That's such a good story. This, yeah, that's what I'm saying you can't don't don't who cares about how old you are? Getting older is a privilege. I, I think know. that is such a privilege. And you know, as you get older, you have so many more life experiences to be able True. to write phenomenal books about. I think that that True. is a blessing. So, mm-hmm. I cheers to Eddie Irvine. Thank you so much for being the Look muse. What he did. Look what he did. <laughs> you know, yeah. you never, I think that just goes to show like you never know what you could stumble across one day that's going to just be inspirational mm-hmm. to you keep your yeah everyone who's listening keep your eyes and your ears and your heart open to things that are inspiring to you and you mm-hmm. too one day could be writing a book exactly was that now was that book that you had written with him as the inspiration was that your first book that you had ever written no but okay. it was the first book that i had ever got serious about and okay. shared with people and that kind of started me on my path and um, actually sent it out to agents. I had a few uh, people interested and then, uh, like I said, the rights are tied up. So uh, just for another year and, and I don't know what's going to come of it, probably nothing. And then I'm going to have my own, you know, I'll have them back and do whatever I want with them. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Well, and I can wait. bring 
bring and that. And that's to called them. an empowered woman. Yes, yes. And you know, it's doing funny. it on her own. Yes. And the funny thing about that book, and I, I don't want to sell it too much because no one can get it, is that <laughs> again, it was in another empower- empowered woman character that I had there because he kind of stumbles upon our main character, this woman who's just moved to Italy and she's a lawyer and she ends up being his manager. So again, who, who, how many formula one drivers have form have women as, you know, managing them and yeah. overseeing their business, you know? So I love uh, that. Even, then, even then I was empowering women. I love it. I love <laughs> that so much. Yeah. Awesome. So, so within your work, uh, is there any sort of trope that has become your favorite to write? And on the mm-hmm. you know flip side, is there any trope that you haven't written that is kind of like sitting in the back of your brain? Like I'd really like to kind of try my hand at that one. I love enemies to lovers. Uh, I love my forbidden romance. I like friends to lovers too, but really enemies to lovers is it. Like love it. Yeah. Love how mm-hmm. they can hate each other like schoolyard you remember when we're all in school and we're like six and we love billy but we have to hate him because we're not yeah. supposed to love him mm-hmm. love yes um love it ropes i'd like i think i'd one day love even though it's i feel it's a bit campy and i am not knocking anyone who does it amnesia mm. like Ooh. just because it's fun and and I'd love to do that, but I don't totally know campy. I but I agree. Like I think sometimes you need more. We need more camp in our lives. Like well, we, we need to do. stop taking things so seriously. Yeah, writing books is fun. I only like it's to read fun, fun books. I don't want to read serious stuff. No, and that's all about what I write. I want you to have a good time, kind of, in more ways than one. Where yeah. where am I going with that? But anyway. I want you to be able to enjoy reading it and not have to walk away going, I am so depressed. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's certainly not what I want out of a reading experience. I I want people to be happy. I love that. (laughs) You know, our slogan, our slogan for the pod is why be upset when you can just have fun. And I feel like that embodies your your works of art. Yes, definitely. (laughs) So, you know, we talked a little bit about your Eddie Irvine inspired book, but do you yeah. have any other motorsport series related books in the pipeline? Not right now. Kind of. I kind of burned myself out last year. I published these, the three books in the Life in the Fast Lane series and mm-hmm. two other books last year. Oh, wow. So okay. I, she was busy. Yeah. I was really, really crazy busy last year. So I don't really, I don't know. I thought this summer I'd write two books. I haven't. So I'm kind of hoping. (laughs) That is, I love that you just said that so casually. You know, I thought I'd write two books this summer. I'm like, I thought maybe this summer I would like clean my bedroom or something. And so I haven't done that. Like, that's like so impressive that you even had that goal. (laughs) I had a goal. I had goals. But it's only July. So maybe. But Maybe. also, it's been a long year so far, <laughs> and I don't blame you. It has been a long year, and it's only July. It's, it's July. It's hot. Yeah. It's hot. Yeah. It's, things are getting crazy in this country. I don't blame you. I don't yep, blame you. Yep, no big yep. deal. Take a break. Yep. You need Bruno's it. Five, real. five books in, in one year last year. It was least. a little. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Give yourself crazy. some grace. I think that you yeah. can take some time uh, to focus on on yourself and just relaxing. I think you've earned that. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh twist my arm. <laughs> okay, the two girls have approved um, Anna taking some time to relax okay. and not writing two books this summer. So okay. tell, tell your friends. <laughs> I will. Awesome. We're gonna get to a little rapid fire round. Okay. Um, so oh, no. at the moment, who mm-hmm. is your favorite F1 driver on the grid and what is your favorite team? Well, I have the weirdest favorite driver, and I don't know why. I like Pierre Gasly. And okay, I don't know she's why. a gas girl. He's a little cutie. So uh, he's, he's definitely, you know, one of my favorites. Okay, so I'm Italian. Of course it's Ferrari. I mean, you're like, in Ferrari red right now, so it only makes sense. That's why I'm in red. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Uh, quick little aside. When my dad passed away, he had a Ferrari jacket. And my mom, not thinking that she has a son and a nephew uh, and a grandson, my nephew, uh, gives it to my partner, which he wears he's like score. Yeah, My brother <laughs> sees him the first time. He's like, where'd you get that Ferrari jacket? 
And and my partner's like, uh, your mom <laughs> didn't go over well. Like, oh my gosh. We're, we're a Ferrari family. That's so that funny. funny. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Okay. Outside of any F1 related romances, what is your favorite book or series, either currently that you've read recently or of all time? Oh my God. I got a weird one. I always yeah, got I'll... weird stuff. I love it. Okay, so I really love Cause Celeb, and it was written by, and I'm, I'm, I apologize for not remembering her name, the Bridget Jones Diary author. Mm, okay. And I don't think anybody knows about this book. It's old, and it is great, and I in, loved reading it. It is really my favorite all-time book. I love that. I'm, I love is that. Anyone, everyone going to go Google it and be like, yeah, I am after this, 100%. <laughs> loved it. I mean, I love Bridget Jones's time. diary. So if she's also written another book, like I it, should it's, read it's it. A little, it's a little different because it's a little not darker, but it's a more serious book. But yet I loved it. Yeah. So that was my I favorite. Love it. All right. Love that. Great wreck. Um, and then for our final question. Are yes. you familiar with the concept of the amazing race? Oh God, yeah. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> so from this series this um life in the fast lane series mm. if you were to go on the amazing race which mm-hmm. character would you choose to be your partner and why oh god it was that's easy it would not be devin um it would be eric riddell because he is uh, very serious about fitness and nutrition so he can do all the hard tasks mm. mm-hmm. i also think he wouldn't care about eating gross stuff yeah, perfect. That's and, important. Um, yeah, and would probably be the type of guy to say, "Oh, this is an easy challenge. You better do it." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's delegating. <laughs> yeah, he's a delegator. He would have it all mapped out. I love it. Perfect answer. <laughs> all right, Anna. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank on the pod you. today. Thank uh, you. This is, you know, this is an opportunity for you to tell the people where they can find you. What do you have coming up? Uh, anything else that you would like to share with our listeners? Uh, well, you can find Life in the Fast Lane anywhere you get books. Uh, what am I working on? Uh, well, I said I was working on two books this summer, but I didn't. <laughs> but I do. So plan, TBD. <laughs> uh, I do plan to release one book in the fall that will be a continuation of a hockey series I've started. Okay. So nice. that is the plan, I hope. Amazing. That's a plan. Well, good things. Perfect. All good things. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And we hope to talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of TG1F, an F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. If you like what you heard, don't miss out on the fun between episodes. Keep up with the chaos on Instagram at two girls, one formula. That's spelled out T-W-O girls numerical one formula. And check out our website, two girls, one formula.com to shop cute fan made F1 merch. See you next week. But like we said, in the meantime, we'll see you on the internet.